Sport has the power to change the world. Hello and welcome to the Laureus Power of Sport podcast. This episode is slightly different from some of the others as we have a report back from Ryan Sands and Rainer Kritzel's incredible trek along the Himalayas. More on that shortly. But first, let me let you in on a special guest who's been camped out in the Laureus South Africa offices over the course of the last few months. He was too busy to speak to us, but I did catch up with his superstar father in Monaco recently. Yeah, he needs to feel the importance of sport in the life of the people. So Laureus uh, Cape Town, South Africa, obviously is the best place for him to understand the, the dynamic and the importance of sports through the society. So I'm very pleased he's there, he will understand. Uh, and what's he telling you about Cape Town? He's not communicating with me at the moment <laughs> because probably the implication is very high so he has no time but I'm sure he will discover how, like I said, sport is important. Well, did you recognize his voice? That of course was football superstar Marcel Desailly chatting about his son Virgil who's been doing an internship of sorts at our offices at the Sports Science Institute in Cape Town. Well, as the champions of England, Manchester City are being confirmed and leagues are getting tied up across the globe, we're starting to cast our eyes towards the impending World Cup in Russia. So we've decided to get in early and get expert insights in who is going to win that event. And we've rolled out the big guns for this, including Marcel. Please join in by sending in your predictions on who you think is going to be crowned champions Thank you once again for your support of the series. A reminder, please, to subscribe by iTunes and Omni Radio. Welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. My name is Marcel Desai, and you are listening to The Power of Sports. Well, you heard then in the introduction the voice of the one and only Marcel Desailly, the former captain of France with whom he won the World Cup and the European Championships. Chelsea, he was an FA Cup winner and he was crowned a Champions League winner with AC Milan and Marseille in consecutive seasons. Fair to say that he has some footballing pedigree. Well, we'll get his prediction in a bit on who will have global bragging rights in Moscow on the 15th of July and I'm wondering who you think might lay claim to that title. But first up on the spot is the Super Sports United and Bafana Bafana midfielder Dean Furman. Um, looking at the teams involved, first of all, I would absolutely love Argentina to win it with Lionel Messi. For me, he's the undisputed greatest player ever, but obviously everyone will always say they haven't won the World Cup or he hasn't done it on the world stage and um, it would be incredible for him to cap off an incredible career lifting the World Cup for Argentina. That's my heart. My head is probably going more so with France and Germany as the two standout teams. Germans, they just know how to get the job done. Obviously, the French have just so much talent. They're going to be definitely one of the favourites. Uh, I would love one of our African counterparts, Senegal, Nigeria, Tunisia or, or Egypt and Morocco, of course, get up, get to knockout stage and you never know. Obviously, Egypt with that man Mo Salah, that they're, they're going to be a threat. England could be a bit of a surprise package. I know that sounds strange, but I know there won't be as much expected of them as, as in World Cups gone by. But with Harry Kane, they've got one of the world's greatest finishers. And if you've got a goal scorer in form, you've always got a chance. But my overall favourites for me, I think I'll go with France to win the World Cup. Just purely, they've got so much talent everywhere you look, and uh, I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. OK, so that's Dean's decision. I wonder who the Banyana Banyana coach Desiree Ellis opted for. My favourites for the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia is Germany, Brazil, Argentina and Spain. The Germany are the current uh, defending champs, four times winners, ranked number one in the world. Uh, top their qualifying group for the World Cup, maximum points. Uh, last year took a very young team to the Confederations Cup tournament and uh, to the surprise of everyone, but not to the surprise of Germany of course, won the competition. Very difficult to be winning a back-to-back as it hasn't been done in 56 years, but they have a lot of experience and good young talent coming up. Um, Jerome Boateng, Gundogan, Kruis, uh, Muller, Ozo, the goal scorer in Werner and the exciting Sani who can uh, you know, tear any defence apart. Um, so for me, you know, they, they have all the quality. Then you cannot discount Brazil. I've uh, won five titles. We're not great in the home country in 2014. I mean, they got beaten 7-1 by Germany, but they have world-class players. Uh, then you have, uh, you have Argentina. Um, 
plus Messi. You know, lost one team in 1986, two times winners, the other one being in 1978. Then you also had Spain, the 2010 winners, um, got 28 out of 30 points in the World Cup qualifying campaign. They have not lost in 18 games and trapped the World Cup qualifying group uh, with Italy. Uh, we know what Spain can do and hopefully they'll have a, a better tournament than in 2014. And what of the chief, former Bafana coach Gordon Egerson? With teams like Spain, England, Argentina and Brazil, they're huge contenders. But I really think that Germany is going to equal Brazil's record of five World Cups. They are in great form at the moment. They won the 2070 Confederations Cup. Their preparation has gone really well. They have a coach that's been with the team since 2006, in Josh and Lowe. He's won the World Cup before. He knows what it's about. He knows all these players very, very well. He has five or six players who are playing for Bayern Munich. They've got a great defence in Jerome Boateng, Hummels, Josh and Kimmich. The captain is Manuel Neuer, the goalkeeper. He's got great experience. And the one thing I love about the Germans is their discipline, their precision, their work ethic and their belief. And now, of course, their confidence. They gain into this World Cup really believing that they can win it. And I think they gain too. And finally, to the man himself, Marcel Desailly. Who does the rock, as he was sometimes called, think will win the Football World Cup? Please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure if you played with Ruud. I you? played a little bit in AC Milan with Ruud. Ah, okay. So, uh, yes, it's been a good time. Yes. So, he told me earlier that obviously the Dutch can't win the World Cup because they didn't qualify. But that France are going to win the World Cup. Well, what's, your, what's your view on that? They have a good team. Uh, the problem we have is that there's too many young and new players in the system. So, it's a bit of a problem for them to be um, enough mature to depend on winning this, this World Cup. We know the quality is there. They've almost done the Euro, huh? but uh, for World Cup I'm not sure, I'm not sure, because uh, Brazil and uh, Germany are still for me the, the, the top teams as a real experience of the highest level, you know, when you get to quarterfinal, how to deal with the pressure, how to deal with the tactic, probably uh, um, the other teams are better. So we have the votes then. France, it seems to be the strong candidate to lift the title. Do you agree or do you disagree with that? Do let us know. So then they did it. Ryan Sands and Rainer Chrysal pulled off the seemingly impossible. The Great Himalayan Trail over 1400 kilometers traversed within 25 days. Absolutely incredible, an extraordinary achievement and a record to boot. Now remember we spoke to Ryan before we headed off on the trip. Well here's what he had to say on his return to Cape Town. Ryan, before you left, you said this was likely to be the most difficult thing that you'd ever tackled. Did it live up to that billing? And can you give us an example of just what made it so tough? Yes, for sure, it's definitely the, the toughest challenge, adventure or anything that I've ever, ever done. It was just so wild and unpredictable. And with the late winter they had, we had a lot of snow and ice and it made the moving very slow going. And also very tricky in places where we had to like take ice axes for certain sections. One or two sections we had to scale along like these massive snow cliffs. Uh, and also with, with ice on them that like if you slipped you would fall like a couple of hundred meters and once or twice like my feet started to slip and I was pretty sketchy and, and I think that that was pretty tricky and then going through places like the Dolpha region where it was just so remote there was just nothing there we didn't expect it to be that remote so we really battled to find food accommodation and the one night we had to stay in a monastery and if they didn't let us stay there um, we would have been in serious trouble because we, we had nowhere to go and it was getting really cold and I think mentally it was just extremely tough to go like for 25 days just like constantly just be like so focused on just trying to cover as much ground every day that made it quite challenging like physically I actually felt I kind of got stronger through the project and that wasn't too too bad so that was that was all good um, but then also other setbacks like Reno got got uh, frostbite and um, he battled with his one knee for a bit so we didn't quite know one stage if he's gonna be able to to get through or not so um, I guess mentally that it all kind of makes it that much more challenging some of the imagery captured on social media was absolutely incredible. And you and Reno pulled off the perfect team effort. Tell us a bit about the partnership. And as I mentioned, you broke that record too, of course. 
Yeah, the imagery was absolutely amazing. Like kind of the typical majestical kind of Himalayan mountains. At the same time, we got a couple of storms as well. So it makes things um, a bit harder and you're not, not seeing too much. And obviously doing something like this for so long, knowing your, your partners is, is really crucial and, and being completely honest and saying exactly how you feel. And I think we worked really well together, especially with, with Brandon doing a lot of the, the navigation and, and, and getting through some, some really tricky sections. And then um, I guess both physically getting through, but I, I guess also I think Rana had a couple of mentally just struggled for, for a bit. So I'd, I'd like to think I helped with, with that in a sense that after the frostbite and kind of his knee injury, it's quite difficult to like just keep picking yourself up the whole time. And um, yeah, big kudos to, to Rainer for, for kind of getting through the times when I, when I thought it was it was going to be really difficult. But Rainer's just kind of got that never die attitude and just kind of keeps on going. So yeah, I definitely think like the teamwork worked really well. And um, I guess like doing something together for 25 days can always be, be a bit tricky. The support you received from those with you and then from around the world has been incredible. Can you let us in on what it was like to see your wife Vanessa and son Max and of course T-Dog on your return? Yeah, the hardest part for me was definitely being away from, from Max, Vanessa and, and T-Dog. I remember like with about seven days to go, I kind of for two days had a really bad like mental patch, just like really missing them and kind of not wanting to be there anymore. So yeah, to see Max and T-Dog was really uh, special, especially like Max growing so quickly. Um, at times um, I felt like I was missing out on him growing up. So it's really cool to be home. And the support we received from, from all over um, has been absolutely incredible. And yeah, I definitely think it makes it that much worthwhile. I guess at times when you're out there and you these really remote areas you feel very like lonely and, and isolated but then i think you think back to to all the people supporting you kind of my dream givers family friends and fans that have supported me along the way i think it makes it that much that much more worthwhile absolutely astonishing feat by ryan and reyno now to see what sort of plan they can try and come up with to attempt to top that event and spare a thought too for the film crew led by dean leslie documented this incredible event themselves completing in many instances feats that no dare we say rational man or woman would ordinarily attempt well that brings to an end this episode thank you so much for listening and importantly subscribing and sharing the series in our next episode we'll be reflecting on the incredible trip that a group of youngsters from the cool play project had to rub shoulders with some of rugby's biggest names at the Hong Kong Sevens. It is the power of sport personified. That's it then from me, Jean Smythe. Look forward to engaging with you on our Twitter, Instagram and Facebook feeds. Don't forget to send us your World Cup predictions. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.